Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are pleased to present our next speaker, Trishika Padabiraman, with Amazon Web Services. Please give her a warm welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me OK? Thank you so much for joining me today. How's everyone doing? Awesome. Um, so I'm going to talk about AWS SAM and do a demo of uh, building and deploying an application and talk to you about uh, recent features we made that uh, enhances the experience. Um, before I go into it, how many of you here have used AWS SAM or are familiar with it? Okay, so I'm going to do a quick overview for those who haven't. So the AWS serverless application model is an open source framework that helps you define, build, and deploy serverless applications. Uh, our purpose is to make it easy for you to do that. Uh, SAM consists of two components, the template specification, which is an extension of cloud formation and uh, allows you to, in shorthand syntax, describe uh, APIs, Lambda functions, and quickly define your infrastructure and resources in a template. Because it's built on top of CloudFormation, uh, if you want finer grain control over properties, you can use CloudFormation uh, specification within your SAM template. The second component of it is the command line interface, the SAM CLI. And what it allows you to do is easily build and deploy applications. With one of our recent features, you can deploy an application with a single command, SAM deploy. It also allows you to locally test your uh, application in a Lambda-like execution environment and works with several of our IDs uh, to provide debugging support as well. Uh, if you want to learn more, that's the link down there to our marketing pages. So I'm going to jump into the demo now. OK, um, I know the font on a CLI is a little tricky, so if you need to see anything or the, it's not visible, please give me a heads up. OK, um, so initializing a SAM application starts with SAM init. Uh, this pushes you into an interactive workflow. And the options you're seeing here are either to pick a AWS provided quick start template. Uh, this will give you everything you need, uh, a simple quick start template to deploy an application for various um, usage patterns, web applications, hello world, et cetera. Uh, if you do know exactly what you want, whether it's uh, a SAM application in GitHub, you can simply choose option number two and start from a custom location. So I'm going to go with Python 3.7 and name this Sam Demo. So what this question is asking you is whether you want to refresh the list of your applications that you're going to get uh, when you look at it. So I've recently uh, refreshed the application option, so I'm just going to go ahead and say no. And for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to start with a Hello World example. As you can see, for Python 3.7, you have your uh, simple event bridge template. You have event bridge template that you can build more complex things with, so a bunch of options. All right, so Sam init has essentially set you up. If we take a quick look, sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to go into the project that's set up for me. And take a look at what all it gave me. So, you know, you have the uh, readme file, and you see the template.yaml. That's where you have your SAM application and your infrastructure definition. Within the Hello World folder, you have your app.py and requirements. What that does is it has your handler and Lambda function code, and the requirements.txt is essentially your manifest file. Uh, the events and tests are two components that actually let you do the local testing effectively. 
Uh, the events.json uh, lets you simulate an API gateway payload while local testing, so you can actually verify that your application is doing what it needs to. Um, so the next step is to build your application. What build does is it iterates through your function, uh, checks what are the dependencies in the manifest file, compiles them into a package format that Lambda uses. Um, so I'm going to try the SAM deploy guided. What this does is it walks you through the required parameters for deployment, gives you the default suggestions, and stores it. So for this, this application, you won't have to uh, give parameters or uh, go through the guided flow again unless you choose to. You can simply SAM deploy and go through it. So I'm fine with the region. So this is actually one of our recently launched features. You have the option to say for this application, whenever I'm deploying through the CLI, by default, show me the chain set, pause at the chain set, and wait for me to validate it. Um, so this, in case you're worried about you know, what you changed in your template, or potentially deleting a resource, you can always take a pause, see what CloudFormation is going to do once you deploy, and then go ahead and deploy your application. So I'm going to ask to verify chain set. Uh, this is just making sure uh, CloudFormation and SAM, our service, have the permissions to create the resources you've mentioned in your SAM template. And I'm going to save it to um, the config file. While this is initializing, I wanted to walk through what you're seeing here on the managed S3 bucket piece. So as some of you may know, um, deploying Lambda functions through CloudFormation requires you to uh, put a packaged entity in S3. And previously, you had to create this bucket, manage it, so on and so forth. Uh, SAM CLI now manages this for you completely. Uh, we create your bucket in a CloudFormation stack, so it's completely protected in your account and your credentials. And we'll use it uh, at an account per region level. So let's say I go to my second application, which is what this is for me. Uh, you'll see that uh, I don't have to create the bucket or provide it. It just checks for it and moves on. Yeah? Yes. You can override it through the configuration config file or through as a parameter input. All right. So it has my change set, which in this case is pretty simple. It's adding all of the entities I've asked for. So I'm going to approve the de deployment for this. In both the commands I've used, uh, I've walked through the interactive workflow. But for init or deploy, let's say this is your fifth SAM application and you know exactly what you're doing, you can always provide these inputs as parameters and move forward with it. The guided experience is just to allow you uh, to review what's default and then have SAM educate you and walk you through the process. With this output display, you can also, if there's ever an error or cloud formation returns an error, you can see exactly what it's telling you. All right. Um, so we've deployed the application, so I'm going to go to the web endpoint. Actually, before I do this, I've realized I should show you what is in our template.yaml. So we're just walking you through the input file. Um, so SAM template is pretty simple. It's got the globals if you use any, and then the resource definition. Within our resource definition here, we have the Lambda function, its properties, and you can pretty much in three lines uh, give it an API endpoint to your Lambda function to create a simple function. And if we go into the app.py, you'll see that your Lambda function is essentially running to return hello world. So. Sorry, that font is really small, but um, let me see if I can zoom it. All 
All right. So uh, the next thing I wanted to walk through was changing this output and using the faster deploy mechanism. Uh, so I'm going to go back to VS Code and say, hello from Sam. So I'm going to save this. Uh, because I've made a change to my function code, I'll have to run Sam build. And after this run, I can hit Sam deploy. And you'll see that it goes through uh, the deployment without asking me for any input. It's still going to pause at the change set to ask me before deploying because that's the default I've set. You can always go back into Sam guided and change that to no. Sorry, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, because the API endpoint needs to reflect the output of the SAM CLI command. All right. So you see the change in output. Um, now, one thing to do is, let's say I make a change. And I don't want to go through the seconds of deploy it took me to see if this worked or not. What I can do right here is a SAM local invoke. Sorry, since I made the change to the function, I'll do a SAM build. And then I can do a SAM local invoke. This basically uh, starts up the Docker container with, uh, that, uh, that you install with SAM CLI. And it uh, provides a Lambda-like execution environment. And this is provided by SAM CLI. Um, and you can see that it tests it, and it says this is the message output. So I can also locally invoke my API endpoint and just check if I'm going to get the output I need. So it's two quick feedback loops in case something's wrong uh, for you to know before you go through your deployment process. So I now can kill this and do a SAM deploy if I so choose. All right. Um, the other piece that I think people find really helpful about SAM CLI is the ability to debug. Um, what we can do is, so I'm using VS Code, but this works for a multitude of other IDEs, is you can simply look for uh, AWS SAM detect. I already have that installed, but if you uh, install and select it, there we go. Uh, you'll see you have the option to run locally, uh, debug locally, and check it. So it also, uh, you can very easily set breakpoints if you want to. Uh, so I'm just going to run this. This is a simple hello world function, so the debugging experience is light. Uh, but if you had a more complex Lambda function, you could easily uh, step through it and walk through it and make sure you have everything that you need. All right. Um, while we're waiting for the deployment, any questions? Uh, so the question was around whether we can have our containers kept warm. Um, we don't have that capability right now, but we're looking into it. All right, and uh, 
final checkpoint. Great. Okay, so uh, this was the quick version of the demo. I'm happy to take questions or walk through um, other scenarios if you'd like. We have five minutes if anyone has questions. Um, I just came from um, an Amplify uh, mm -hmm. demo, and I see like a lot of similarities. So w what are the use cases for one or the other? Can I integrate? I, c I can't use them both. That seems So it's like absolutely your choice on which one you want to use. I think um, Amplify has a strong focus on full stack developers and web application developers. Um, and uh, Sam is specifically for the serverless applications, but supports more gener generic set of use cases. So mm -hmm. it really is your preference and what you want to use. OK, and I guess a related question is, I'm coming from the serverless framework. So can you, can you do the same kind of comparisons here? Or? Serverless framework is a close partner, and they, uh, we work with them on all of, you know, pretty closely. So uh, with whichever framework you're more comfortable, so. Uh, for example, the difference there is SAM is an extension of CloudFormation versus serverless a framework write their own framework out. Um, mm -hmm. It's a choice on what you want to use, how you use it, how close or comfortable you are with CloudFormation. Okay. I mean, one thing I have found that's useful about SAM is that it emulates API Gateway better than, than uh, serverless offline or anything like that. But that's all my, all my questions. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, what's the long-term use case on this? Is this just for getting going and, and getting your, your serverless apps kind of initially generated, or would you continue to use this for your continual development, especially in like a .NET environment where you're doing you know, your .NET projects? I think I almost caught that, so I'll try to answer it, and please let me know on a follow-up if I didn't. Uh, so it absolutely can and should be used for production applications. Um, I primarily used it for getting started because of the time constraint of the demo. Um, you can also integrate SAM with CI CD pipelines, like Jenkins or Code Pipeline, uh, so you, uh, AWS Code Pipeline. Uh, so you can, uh, once you do that, you can use it for more production level use cases with the best practices you need. We have another question right here. What is the editor you use for the debugging? Is it like Cloud9 or? Uh, oh, sorry. So we have an AWS toolkit for VS Code, and that supports the debugging functionality. 